This is Rental Management on the Air. For many, 3D printing conjures images of tabletop devices carving items in a neat, high-tech way. But large-scale 3D printers are quickly gaining traction across the construction rental industry, and Black Buffalo 3D is at the forefront of the movement. Rental Management's Brock Huffstutler discusses the high-tech sustainable rental applications of Black Buffalo 3D's products with two of the company's principals, Peter Cooperman and Tim Murphy. Black Buffalo 3D was started as the global accelerator for companies that existed in South Korea for a while because we were founded by the uh, grandson of the founders of the Hyundai Corporation. Originally, it was a company, believe it or not, called Corona (laughs) Design (laughs) Services um, that was acquired by our ultimate parent in South Korea. Um, They were testing it out. They had a a printer that would print around 100 square feet. just put, you know, mortar and and different materials. Uh, From there, they saw a real, you know, business potential from the traction that small business got. Mm -hmm. So they started Black Buffalo. South Korea one-upped our expectations and instead of making a slightly bigger printer, (laughs) made a a four-story tall behemoth that printed 1,600 square feet up to four floors high. Just this past January, February, we launched our commercial Nexcon 1G. That's the printer behind me um, in this display that we did down in Orlando. Um, So it's a a fully modular printer uh, manufactured right now in South Korea, but we bought a regional airport in Pennsylvania, closed it down, and it's becoming our permanent U.S. factory. Um, We're scale manufacturing there. Can you kind of explain a little bit about I guess, without revealing anything proprietary, the kind of what exactly the ink is and your printer and how it kind of works on, on, on the job site. And the first thing we actually did was there's only one standard for 3D printed walls in the world um, by the International Code Council. It's called the AC509. And it was only written to go up to eight feet tall, which we thought that severely limits <laughs> what you could do with this tech. Um, so we spent a year, we rewrote that code so that it goes up to multi-stories. Uh, we made a commitment to take the ink that we have, and it's kind of funny we call it ink. Tim and I both have experience in the copier and, <laughs> and printer business. Um, but we decided to take that formula, which is essentially a ready mix, and look at how we could make it so that it worked better, so we didn't have to stop printing. Um, Some companies out there have to stop every seven or eight layers for it to cure and set up to support the following layers, Um, but also looked at ingredients to make sure that they could be sourced globally. So if we come up with an ink, we wanted it to work over a a wide variety of environmental circumstances, and we wanted to make sure that all our customers had to do was add water. How are you going about educating, you know, potential clients in, in the kind of contracting and construction world about the availability of something like this and then the kind of the viability of it as a as a legitimate building resource for people who may be unfamiliar with the with the, with the concept yeah the rental market makes a lot of sense and how we go to market um, the rental part of it plays into pretty well actually construction companies as peter mentioned they all, I think it's 93% of all construction companies rent equipment. I think you guys gave me that stat as a matter of fact. So we've been using that to our advantage and publishing that uh, stat, using it to show people out there that we have what you are used to doing already right now in this industry. And we try and go through lots of different channels as well. Uh, not just rental, obviously, but on the sales channel, we're going through and looking at different um, housing associations, Uh, Currently, we're going state by state and digging up all of the construction firms within each state, reaching out to them, offering them kind of a a learning and educational opportunity to find out more about new technologies they can utilize and how they can save more money and build faster and build cheaper, all those good things. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, educating them on the sustainability factor as well, too. Sustainability is a, a Pretty big selling point you have for your product. Yes. The cool thing about what's going to happen here, um, you and I like to do all sorts of great good deeds and recycling and doing the best thing we can for the environment. But what's going to happen here is the economics of it eventually is going to drive sustainability because it naturally uses less product. Uh, We use between uh, one to two full garbage cans 
of waste of concrete maximum per build, whereas a stick built home is usually between one and two tons of waste. Um, so a massive savings in waste alone right there is because we only print what we need. We don't bring in product and remove it. We only put in additively is the main word, additive manufacturing into what we create. So there's a natural savings and sustainability right there. We are at a point in time where massive amounts of construction is going to happen. And if we can do the sustainability factor of it and the economics of it work, we're going to drive a massive change in the total sustainability factor of the entire industry. You can learn more about Black Buffalo 3D at their website, bb3d.io, and in the October issue of Rental Management Magazine. This has been Rental Management on the Air.